What's going on, Raider Nation? Welcome back to the Raider D Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Josh Jacobs doing a little bit of backstabbing to the Raiders, trying to recruit Devontae Adams. I'm sure many of you have heard about it. And if you have not heard about it, well, we're going to talk about it today because I'm a little bit fired up about uh, how Josh Jacobs is trying to, you know, do some, pull some shenanigans, man. And maybe it was just all in good fun. Maybe it was all just in good faith. But the fact that he's trying to get Devontae Adams to come back to Green Bay and join him over there. Well, look, man, if you don't want to be a Raider, that's fine. Go on. Bygones be bygones. Water under the bridge. You didn't get the money you wanted here. You thought you were worth more. Great. I was one of the guys who was advocating for you to get your money, Josh. But if you want to play this type of game where you want to make the Raiders worse by trying to get Devontae Adams to go back when we need Devontae Adams more than ever right now this year, I say I'm not happy with that. I don't like that. So that's just my opinion uh, as far as Josh Jacobs goes. How are you guys, Raider Nation, how are you feeling about Josh Jacobs pulling these types of shenanigans? Because, I mean, for me, I, I just, I, you know, it's one thing for him to get into arguments with the fan base on X and Instagram and all of that. Okay, I don't really care about that too much. That really doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, people get in arguments on Facebook and, and X and Instagram. I argue with people on our Facebook uh, group, uh, which, by the way, is the Silver and Black Nation, the largest uh, Raiders only Facebook group. It is awesome. We're at like, I don't know, even know, 74,000 members over there right now. So I'll put that up here in just a minute. I'm, and right now I'm actually, I'm going to dual stream this right now over there. Um, well, maybe I, I don't know why. Huh? Let's see. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not. It's, uh, it is not letting me connect. Okay, so we're going to have to figure that out for next time. For some reason, I am not able to connect to the Facebook group right now. Facebook group or Facebook just changed things um, and made them more difficult to do. I don't know why they did that. I hate Facebook, man, sometimes. Just the way that they do things is really annoying. But yeah, anyway... Um, so there's a lot to talk about today. We're going to be talking about the Josh Jacobs situation, obviously for one, but we're also going to be talking about uh, some of the OTA things. Obviously on this channel, we just had uh, Trey Taylor, rookie safety out of Air Force. Phenomenal dude, phenomenal athlete. Cannot wait to see him get his shot. We will be seeing him in the preseason, I'm sure quite a bit. Um he is going to be something exciting. I don't know if, you know, Trayvon Mooring is going to be able to come back. Uh, I, they haven't re-signed him to anything. We'll have to see. I mean, we have a lot of guys that need to be re-signed. We just gave $6 million to Max Crosby without even getting anything out of it. Um, it was just a bonus for him just being, you know, a stud and all of that. Um, but that kind of hurts us in the salary cap a little bit. Not a whole lot, but, you know, it is what it is. And uh, why does that say that? Uh, change that. All right. I do want to announce, guys. I'm going to check this out. Uh, so I do have another channel that we just started. Now, I've, I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, know a lot about business, know a lot about money, know about making money, know about losing money. If you guys want to learn some of the things that I have learned, go and check out Moneynomics. Uh, it is our other YouTube channel. I just popped the link here in the uh, comment section. I will continue to pop it throughout this thing. Brand new channel that we're just starting, so go show us some support over there. Click on the link in the comments. takes you over there, and uh, yeah, let's go. Hey, you know what I just noticed? I got a uh, intruder in the house. A guy by the name of Hot Beavers just popped up. <laughs> Just bullied his way up, up? In here. Just kidding. He's always yeah. Up. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Long time no see. What's up, man? You know, there's just been a lot going on and stuff. And, <clears throat> you know, life is uh, sometimes it's mm -hmm. difficult, sometimes it's wonderful. And just went through a little bit of a difficult yeah. period uh, with the family and stuff. Yeah. So, 
Uh, just trying to get back into the swing of things. I know I've been uh, I have been uh, incognito a little bit, but I hope all of you guys got to see the Trey Taylor interview. If you haven't seen the Trey Taylor interview yet, you got to go watch the Trey Taylor interview because the dude mm-hmm. is going to be phenomenal. I'm telling you right now. What yeah. did you think about Trey Taylor? I know you've seen it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just an impressive individual, impressive person. Um, a lot like I thought he would be. Um, you can see, like the deliberative way that he goes about uh, life, right? Like, um, he's definitely has a plan, and uh, you can kind of see him executing all the time. It's like this uh, controlled aggression, is what I would say. I feel when I'm when uh, when you you know uh, watch that interview and kind of from him is that he has this real extreme controlled aggression and you know you watch him on tape of course and then you just don't see many safeties that come up hit like a linebacker you know cover like a corner play instinctually and then you know they're intimidating they play right on the edge of 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 you know what's acceptable um but he doesn't ever really go over that and so it's uh yeah having seeing him and kind of his story it matches. It makes sense for, for the way he plays in the field, and I have huge expectations for him. Um, it's going to be funny to see him versus, like, a Chris Smith this season because um, we didn't even really get to see Chris Smith out of Georgia last year, but I was very impressed with him also. So we're starting to get to a place where we have a lot of depth and players we're going to regret having to get rid of. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, thank you, uh, A-Train, for the kind words and everybody that's been supportive. If you didn't know, we lost my uh, father-in-law uh, pretty pretty unexpectedly, very rapidly. Um, kind of a big blow. He was, he was the rock that kept uh, the entire family together. And so uh, been dealing with that for the past week. Um, and then, obviously, I had the big Trey Taylor interview um, that went just phenomenal. Um, he is such a great kid, and like you were saying, um, I mean, he hits like a linebacker. I call him a cruise missile because he literally, <laughs> just, like, he just laser yeah. targets. Like, you can see when you go watch his game tape. And look, man, I, I, I admit my ignorance. We were live together when, when on draft day when we drafted him, and I didn't know hardly anything about him. I had seen his name. In Air Force, I had seen him mm-hmm. on the draft board somewhere between the fourth and sixth round. And then when I right. picked him up and, and you were like, dude, that's Ed Reed's cousin. I was like, oh, okay, I got to go learn something <laughs> uh, yeah. because Ed Reed is yeah. a Hall of Fame safety. So if this kid is yeah. 80% of his cousin, <laughs> then uh, yeah. we just got ourselves a monster. So, and then sure enough, I went, I, be- I, I looked at his game tape and I was flabbergasted at. The angles mm-hmm. he takes. A lot of guys, yes. this is where they're bad. They may hit really good. They might have good tackling skills, but they'll take poor angles and they won't get the tackle. Mm-hmm. Guys will get away from yeah. them. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, Trey yeah. Taylor does not. And the other thing that was super impressive with Trey is he is very intelligent. When I asked mm-hmm. him, how do you, because it seems like you read the quarterback and the offense, like some people would read a comic book. Like when you're reading a comic book, mm-hmm. you already know what the next page is going to be. It's so obvious. And that's exactly how he does it. And, you know, he, he was basically breaking it down. All of the different things that he looks at pre-snap. Mm-hmm. And he listed off yeah. like a dozen different things. I was like, wow. It's beautiful. Anybody beautiful. who says that football players are not smart, has never played football. It is one yeah. of the most complex games, especially when you get to the NFL level. It's one of the most complex games in human history, and yeah. I think that he's going to be he's going to be really good. Uh, Tano Raider, I thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Um, everybody that's in here right now, um, thank you guys so much for all the kind words. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I'm trying to get as many of you on the board as I possibly can here. Um, and then uh, Raul uh, asks. Can the Raiders retire number 24 for Woodson? Uh, The Raiders' official policy is they do not retire numbers. So despite him being the GOAT, somebody will wear his You know, lots of of football teams do that. You know, um, there's certain numbers that just have a a specific importance. And if you wear them, 
then you're supposed to live up to them. So that's that's kind of how, how we uh, how we do it here in Raider Town. So, right? Did you see but my? Yeah. I sent you the link to that video I just dropped on my other channel, Mon- Money Nomics. Did I did, did. Yeah. You watch it? Yeah. I did. I did. I, did. I, did. Yeah. I watched it. I checked it Brand out. Brand new channel Very that cool. we're adding to the portfolio mm-hmm. here because uh, I like to talk about things that I have knowledge in and things that I'm interested in. Money mm-hmm. and uh, entrepreneurship is one of them. I've never been a guy that can work a nine to five. I've never been able to take directions from anybody. I've always had to be my own boss. Yeah. Um, right. You know, literally, since I, I started my first company when I was 12. Um, yeah. Obviously, I mean, I kid stuff, not not nothing to hang your hat on. Um, I Actually, I remember my, my very first business venture. I was probably like eight. And me and the next door neighbor kid, who was also like eight or nine, um, we wanted to buy some candy. And I had found some change in my mother's couch cushion. And remember that day mm-hmm. when people used to carry change and you could always find a quarter mm-hmm. or something in the cushions? Oh, yeah. That doesn't Easily, really yeah. happen too mm-hmm. much anymore. I, I haven't carried change <laughs> in forever. But back then, I, I literally came up with, I don't know, like $1.25 or something in change out of my house. He came up with a couple bucks out of his house. We got on our bicycles, nice. rode down to the gas yeah. station, and bought a bunch of candy. Mm-hmm. And we brought it back. We didn't eat any of it yet. We were getting ready to, and this other kid says, "Hey, can I have some candy?" I was like, "Man, well, go to your, uh, go to your your mom's house and and find some money, and I'll, I'll you can buy it from me." And so he mm-hmm. did. He came back, and I was like, "He's like, well, how much is it?" And I don't know. I was like, maybe back then, maybe like forty five cents, fifty cents, or something for a candy or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, a dollar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he gave me a dollar, and then so I looked at my buddy. I was like, "Hey, you know, I got a great idea." <laughs> <laughs> my mom just made lemonade. She's got this plastic table. We'll pull it out here. We'll bring out all the lemonade and we'll put the candy out and we'll start a store. But by the end of the day, we had like 50 bucks, man. All the kids were geeked out mm-hmm. on sugar. Um, it was crazy, man. So I was hooked, yeah. I was hooked on it. So guys, if you want to yeah. check that out, if you want to pick my brain and uh, learn about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship, all the ups and downs of it. If you like learning about how to make side hustles, make money, how to save money on your taxes, all that stuff, that I've been through it a gazillion different times. Like I said, uh, I've, I've been a, a part of several different companies, started several companies. Um, I've been through failures with companies. I've been through successes with companies. So I have a very wide range of it. And that's what this new channel is going to be about. We're going to be talking about all that. It's called Moneynomics. It's got my big ugly mug on the cover of it. Uh, And this is the video that we just dropped today. It is in the comments. Guys, go and check that out. Show your support. Subscribe to it. And, you know, watch the videos because I spent like, uh, God, I don't know, 15 hours editing that one because it's a 17-minute video. Oh, yeah. yeah, That'll do it. I've been doing it. That sounds about right. I've been going since yesterday on it. Uh, just finally finished it and dropped it at like five o'clock tonight. Yeah. And, and speaking of great businesses that Raider D is a part of, um, make sure you, you check out the Black Rain official newsletter, which is, uh, you know, newly, newly put out there. And, uh, you know, I would, I would say that whoever worked on it is an amazing artist. And well, here's the thing about visionary newsletter. Uh, so I have a, a, a dark night. <laughs> In, in in my arsenal um mm. and i i put out like whenever the the new edition of the newsletter is going to go out i just i hit the spotlight and it's got <laughs> of, of a black bat goes up into the sky and suddenly there's a beaver in my driveway and uh a a brand new edition just magically shows up of the black rain official <laughs> newsletter, which we just sent out the next, we're, another edition is going to be going out here in a couple of days. Unfortunately, my wife, uh, we think actually just came down with COVID today. Um, oh my or, well, not today. She's probably had it for a few days. Um, yeah. No, that this makes sense. Second no. time that she's had it now. So it's been a rough week for mm-hmm. any type of production of any kind. Um, so yeah, she's she's upstairs just uh, resting. I've been making her tea and soup all day. Um, but yeah, so the Black Rain official that the latest edition just went out a couple of days ago. Uh, another edition because we are a little bit backed up. We'll be going out as soon as my wife is feeling better because she is the one that sends those out when my uh, my Dark Knight superhero Mister Hot Beavers uh, writes up a lot of those articles for us. So if you guys don't know this dude right here in front of me uh mr hot beavers from raider nation hotspot you got to go and check out his channel you got to subscribe to him 
Uh, he goes live as well. He's been you know, a partner of mine in this journey in the Raider creator content thing for pretty much the beginning. Um, and so just a great friend, great brother, um, a great Raider, puts out tremendous con content. So please go make sure that you guys are showing support to him as well because he is also one of the uh, main writers for our newsletter. So if you want like some in-depth analysis of what's going on with the Raiders, you got to get on the Black Rain official. We will be doing a, uh, a link for a mm -hmm. landing page on that very soon. Just we've got a million yeah. things going on. So right now, if landing you want to get on it, um, just send me an email for right now. Um, and I'm put it up here uh, on the board. There it is. Raider D podcast at gmail.com. If you want to get on the black rain official newsletter that right yes. now is, is like bi-monthly. So we're sending out about two a month and we're going to be ramping that up as well. Um, especially yeah. once we get closer to yeah. the season. Absolutely. Uh, it, interesting about talking Brandon. about hate. Uh, what do you think about this Josh Jacobs thing and him trying to recruit Devonte Adams back to green Bay? Because I hate that. I, I absolutely – I know it was probably in good fun, but it just leaves a sour mm -hmm. taste and being that he just had all this controversy about, you know, him not saying goodbye to the fan base and having okay. beef on so this, and all that stuff. I, I have a take here. I have a take here. So I remember last year um, I had an unpopular opinion. I said that uh, we should not uh, overpay Josh Jacobs that we should have let him go, that the loyalty to the team thing of him being the heart of the team and that sort of stuff was overblown. And I think I've been proven right. Uh, we franchised him. He had a down year. He was injured. He left. He stabbed us in the back, and now he's trying to recruit our best player. Now, I don't hate him for it, but this is business, people. This is why you don't overpay running backs. Remember this and keep this energy when it's time to re-sign another running back or linebacker or another non-premium position player who is not exceptional, Hall of Fame, all world, right? Yeah, if he um, ain't Bo Jackson, don't, don't overpay. Yeah, and, uh, you know, bringing him back on the franchise last year, I think, was something we did need to do. Zamir was ready. We could have spent that money elsewhere. Um and like I said, he, he did not perform for the amount that we paid him last year, right? Um, and I could have anticipated that because he had so many carries the year before. And there's been a clear precedent of that happening. So um, now he'll probably have a better year this year than he had last year because he's two years removed and actually got a little bit of a blow. But point being, we overpaid him. So that's my big take from this. Uh-oh. It looks like we may have a technical difficulty here. It looks like uh, hot beavers connection went out. Not sure what's going on with his, uh, with his connection, with his link. So I'll take over from here um, until he comes back. So, yeah, here's, here's my thing and how I feel about it. Um, you know, I was touting Devonte Adams was touting that the guy needs to get paid. And I thought at the very least he should be getting paid more than Hunter Renfro because he has more production than Hunter Renfro, more yards, more touchdowns, more touches. Therefore he should at least get paid what Hunter Renfro is getting paid at the same time. Um, I, I think he started, I, and I understand why he was getting up so upset with the McDaniels administration and how happy he was once McDaniels was gone. But um, he didn't really seem to show that enthusiasm for coming back either. And he went and he took, he didn't even really take that good of a deal over there in uh, Green Bay. Right. I mean, it's not even a guaranteed deal. 
So if he doesn't perform, they can cut him. They can cut their losses. I mean, I get that. Like, he's trying to get his bag, and I don't have a problem with that. Get your bag. Because, you know, we've talked to retired NFL players who are only in their 60s, and they've had both knees replaced. They are constantly having to go to physical therapy. They've had all kinds of uh, uh, surgeries. Jim Otto, Mr. Football, had 70 surgeries and had his legs amputated because of it. So I, I don't have a problem with these guys getting their money. Don't have a problem with that at all. But be classy about it. Um, the Raider Nation loved Josh Jacobs. And so for, for the, I guess, the way that it all ended with him, for me, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, and now that he's kind of rubbing it in, like going to Devontae and, and hey, why don't you come back? Uh, come back to the uh, Green Bay and all of that stuff. I don't really like that. I mean, it's just not classy. Um, and, you know, Devontae ain't going nowhere. Okay, you're back, brother. Yes, I am. Had awesome. Technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of technical issues, but I think we're, we're good now. But, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I understand how people feel about the about the whole situation with uh, with Jacobs um, and I agree with you it, it's kind of kind of shady but you know like I said we shouldn't have given him so much uh, I think financial respect in the first place um, you know last year so yeah yeah and so I mean he's He's in Green Bay now. Um, I mean, you think about it. Look, look, you can sit there and say, well, it was the Raiders' fault. The Raiders are being cheap. Um, the, Raiders, the Raiders just proved that they're not cheap when it comes to being a leader and massive production. We just gave $6 million to Max Crosby. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. Just, here's a gift. Yeah. We want you to have some extra coin in your pocket because you mean that much to us. So yeah. my thing is, you know, Josh, if you would have just, you know, put team first, that could have been you. You could have got a, a nice little bump in your paycheck for no other reason than just being all out awesome. But uh, you, you chose not to be. Um, and honestly, I think he could have played in in the last couple of games that he was out. I think he could have. I think that he was saving himself because he knew that he probably wasn't going to be back. Didn't want to risk any long-term injury or, or, or cause a concern of long-term injury. And so he just sat out. That's my opinion. No facts, no rhyme or reason to that. I don't have any investigative reports of it. But we've seen this before. Uh, with, you know, over the years with different <clears throat> players, you know, and so uh, I think he just played the injury card, got out of having to play, collect his paycheck, and then go into the offseason knowing that he was going to be a free agent and then just get a, a, as big of a bag as he possibly could. And um, so, yeah, I, I, hope, uh, I hope Green Bay has an absolute horrible year. I hope uh, love uh, regresses terribly <laughs> that they rely on Josh Jacobs 100% of the time until uh, he's broken uh, just because now now I just have a sour taste in my mouth with him whereas before I was one of his biggest supporters and I just feel like mm -hmm. he doesn't care and so okay if you don't care about the Raider Nation and all the love that the Raider Nation gave you and you just want to crap on us then okay yeah I, I don't I never understood the whole why he couldn't do a goodbye message thing. So, but you know, it is what it is, man. He's, he's, he's a Packer, more power to him. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I hope love and, uh, you know, does, does the whole, you know, backwards, uh, regression sort of thing or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And I feel like Zamir White, is the one that really is uh, being disrespected more than anybody. Um, did you see the, the PFF grading him the worst 
fantasy running back in the whole entire NFL behind well, I, several second string running backs. Did you see the, did you see that? It's the same PFF that says we have the worst quarterbacks in the room. The same PFS that says we're going to finish last in the AFC West. Mm-hmm. You know what I say about PFS? I, this is a family friendly uh, uh, program, so I'm not going to say how I'm feeling about it, but you guys can read my mind. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, they also said we had a B for the off season. So apparently horrible quarterback room, horrible draft, horrible running back, but a B for the off season. So yeah, make it make sense. Um, yeah. Zamir, the disrespect. If you can get Zamir white, get him um, in your fantasy league. Um, I typically play in a fantasy league where um, I exploit my knowledge of the Raiders to uh, win my league every year. Um, but I'm not sure that's going to be as easy because I'm inviting some Raider fans in this year, which could spoil things for me. Um, but Zamir is going to be a huge, huge get in fantasy football if you're into that sort of thing. Some people around here don't. don't well, really care I mean, much. here's the thing. So with Luke Getzi's offense um, and then just the, the whole – methodology of how we're going to run this offense, why we, we drafted Lauby, why we re-signed Amir Abdullah, why we have so many running backs, why we Madison. got Madison, um, is because the whole philosophy is it's going to be a running back by committee. And so the idea of running your running back into the ground by week 14 and then him not being available for the remainder of the schedule it doesn't work anymore when you have a 17-week schedule in the NFL these days. Mm-hmm. Because of that, you have more teams are moving towards the running back by committee approach. This is why running backs are losing their value. Because, you know, 10, 15 years ago, a running back could get a bag no problem if he was good. If he was a 1,000-yard back, he's, he's getting a, a nice chunk of change. Because the offense relied on that running back so much. So nowadays, not so much. Nowadays, you know, you're running that 12-man personnel and you're running running back by committee. And, you know, like Tom Telesco uh, said in a statement, you can use three backs to get 1,000 yards. You still got 1,000 yards rushing. (sighs) This is true. You you need one guy to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, you know, position, the running back position has been devalued, um, you know, and there's not much you're going to do to change that, especially because it's a passing league and everybody loves the big pass plays and all that stuff. It's, it's made the league more exciting, so it, it kind of is what it is, right? Uh, Steve um, Rat says, who's your favorite Raider player? Mine's Bo Jackson. He was a, a, this, a walking, breathing, living video game. Yeah, I mean – we're saying like all time. If we're saying all time, mine is Cliff Branch. Um, nice. Just uh, love me some Cliffy, flash of light, puff of smoke, and consummate Raider. Um, taught the new generation of Raiders what it was like to be the old generation of Raiders. So much respect to Hall of Famer Cliff Branch. Um, that's my dude. So yeah, I would. Um, I would, I would have <clears> went with a quarterback. I know, right? Because I love quarterbacks so much. Um, I love Jimmy P, you know, I love me some Stabler, but, uh, yeah, I feel like Cliff Branch was just a special. Love, you love another quarterback, too, who lost the Super Bowl in 2002. <sighs> so I have respect for Mr. MVP, Rich Gannon. MVP, okay. I mean, hey, you know what? Lamar Jackson got MVP last year. How, how well did that help him win a Super Bowl? Oh, wow. Did you just come for Lamar Jackson? I'm just saying, MVP don't mean nothing unless you win the Lombardi Trophy. Uh, I mean, you don't always win the Lombardi Trophy the same year. It just means that he has – it wasn't Gannon that was the problem. It was the fact that they knew our plays. We can go over this a hundred times. We've been over it a hundred times. He's going to cause – you're going to cause this guy to beat you up. That's really what's going to happen. And then – I dream about it. (laughs) <laughs> it's about Rich Gannon and me in a cage together because I still have a lot, so much animosity for the interceptions and losing uh, the game. 
You actually? No, I don't. I don't hate Rich Gannon at all. Uh, I think he was he was fantastic. I got a lot of love and respect for him. I tease, I kid, I have fun. Yeah. Uh, but oh, for sure. I but those picks were get, daggers. They were. Yeah. I I would love to get uh, Rich Gannon <laughs> in an MMA cage, uh, and raise some money for uh, the Blitnikoff Foundation. I think it would be a, a great time. We could get it. Uh, I think we could get it sanctioned down there in Vegas by the uh, the fight committees. Mm-hmm down there yeah. and uh yeah. yeah we wear we wear you know 15 ounce gloves and and uh, oh yeah, yeah. And stuff and, and I, i'll i'll I train would, i'll train for even, my roughing I even, and everything i would keep it all body shots you know he's used to those I, i'd keep away from his head because you know he took a lot of concussions uh there was a, there was a <gasps> big old boy named saragusa that put a concussion on him that you know i thought he was i thought he died i was um, like oh dang he just killed our quarterback <laughs> He tried to. He really yeah. did. I, he yeah. belly flopped on top of him, which I thought. I'm not sure a human can can take. I think if it wasn't for the gear, he may have been like a pancake, actually. So, um, he's. So I got a good question here. Who's the next priority free agent that we should resign? Me. Between I'm Spillane, afraid. Spillane, Morag, Epps, Hobbs, or Coons. So who's the biggest uh, free agent to sign between? Spillane, Morg, Epps, Hobbs, or Kuntz. I'm going to tell you straight up, it's either Hobbs or Kuntz because the other players don't play premium positions. Um, and I'm not sure if Spillane gets resigned. We'll see. Um, this depends on what Eichenberg does. Um, it's one of those positions you don't Spillane want to try to spend a bunch of money on. I think Spillane will just due to the fact that um, he's the leader of the secondary of the linebackers and everything. And- you know, everybody has so much respect for him, and, and he really played lights out last year. I think, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he came over on what? Uh, Two-year, $7 million deal? Mm-hmm. Like, super cheap. So it's not like you're yeah. going to break the bank for him. Um, yeah. So I think that if you just secure him, lock him up for, you know, a good four-year deal, um, you could probably get away with it for maybe $7 million a year. That's, that's if we're talking that's, seven, that's, yeah, that's nothing, right? Yeah, if, as long um, as we're not I, paying 10, 12 million for Spillane. No, no. Right. and I think he would be more than happy. For one, he loves being a Raider, he wants to win a championship mm-hmm. with us. He loves Max Crosby, sure. the D line, he loves everybody. He's a great dude. Mm-hmm. I think he would definitely be like, Yeah, I get to. I mean, you're looking at 28 million dollar deal for a four year deal. I'm gonna. After taxes, agent, all that stuff, he's probably somewhere around twenty million bucks. Yeah, I get twenty million dollars in the bank. I get to play the game that I love with the teammate that I love with the team that I love. Yeah, I'll take that deal all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't I know if they have sure. a free agency for Water Boys, but just in case there is, I am available. Raiders, <laughs> paying attention. Um, yeah, you know I'm still out on the market. I haven't. My phone hasn't been ringing. I've been paying attention. Yeah. for the I water. still. Yeah. The water boy I position. still run, I run under a five forty still, so I'm good. I'm, I'm ready. Um, um, I think I'm somewhere around a, a six eight, <laughs> um, and only for about four seconds total. Oh. <laughs> it's and like I won't I get ha- the whole and forty then I have hours. To, then I have to drink the water. You know, what I mean that's why right. I always got the water bottle. I'm like, Max, I'll well, be right know, there. I'll be yeah. one, one minute. Hold on. Here I come. I'm coming. Sorry, the next play, man. It's sorry, the next play. Like, it's yeah, too late. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Hobbs, Hobbs and Coons are going to get resigned. Hobbs and Coons aren't going anywhere. Um, the other people are questionable. Marriage, probably the next on the list that would probably be most likely to be resigned. And then, you know, Epsons, Villain, I guess we'll see, um, depending on how much, you know, they price themselves at. So, I mean, I think you've got to resign Hobbs. I know he's had some injuries. Yeah. But when it comes to. to a nickel corner, he's yeah. top five in the NFL. Um, yeah. Sooner rather than later. Yeah, I was watching some some of the uh, the highlight breakdowns of his uh, this past week. And the way yeah, that he reads defenses and the way that mm-hmm. he anticipates, you just don't find that type of a player. No. combined with his athleticism. Now, there's smart guys who yeah. don't have his athleticism, and then there's guys with his athleticism who aren't as smart as him. 
He's got right. a combination of both. His only issue has been some health injuries. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's football. It's kind of to be expected. Um, you just I mean, mm-hmm. you don't see guys like Otto going out there and, and playing games blind. Uh, yeah. It doesn't happen they, anymore. Injuries happen. They care about get pulled out. the whole after the career thing yeah. kind of matters a little bit. But, yeah, he's, he's exceptional. Did you see the highlight uh, video I put out uh, – earlier today or the other day um just breaking down kind of the highlights from last year like the plays this dude makes like the play he made the miami game like just stripping the ball well there's the play against tyreek that was already awesome yeah the fourth and one (laughs) on tyreek yeah that was read that play perfectly yeah and and tackled him for a five-yard loss we got the ball blasted him he also stripped I don't know if it was Tyreek or no, I think it was Jalen Waddle or somebody that he just absolutely stripped for a turnover. Um, just in this really heads up play. He's just he's just a smart, you know, that controlled aggression stuff that I was talking about earlier. You kind of hear from him, so it's pretty awesome. Um, so uh, Ray McLean just said the link to my other channel, Money Nomics, is not working in here. I just realized Uh-oh. why that is. It's because we're in the vertical format, which means we are streaming onto the shorts network for YouTube, and you cannot put a link in the comments. That's why it's not working. So let me, real quickly, I'm going to throw this into the description. Oh, I don't know if you can do that in the description. <coughs> I think they took that out as well. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. Ouch. Um, yeah, they did. Let me. So, Isokali is a new subscriber. Awesome. Good job. Thank you, Isokali, for joining in to the conversation. Ritter D is awesome. So you, you're you're getting you're getting a lot for free, man. Just like it doesn't doesn't cost you anything, and you're you're gonna get I mean, a, a lot you of cool join info. And become a member. You could always then, do that. You could always drop you get even more. Chat. Yeah. Then. You, Get even more out of that because you know how much um, YouTube pays for lives. An hour live that might get ten thousand views and make like a dollar <laughs> eighty. Yeah, you know, they don't, YouTube they don't is so stingy, man. Yeah, they don't pay for that part. Um, uh, Dirty RC just joined. Uh, just became a subscriber. Hats off to you, sir. Thank you very much. Salute, Raiders. Uh, and nice. anybody else that's in here right now, if you're brand new to the channel, this is the Raider D podcast with mm-hmm. my consummate guest host from the Raider Nation hotspot, Mr. Hot Beavers himself, who is also the main contributor, contributing writer to the Black Rain official newsletter. If you guys want to jump on that, send me an email over at RaiderDPodcast at gmail.com. And you guys yes. can sign up for that. It is free. And I will Yes, check out the new format. Yeah, the new format is awesome. So, Designed check by it out. Uh, the Dark Knight himself. <laughs> the Batman. A, um, a flaming beaver. The Batman beaver. of, of uh, sports writing, Mr. Hot Beavers. <laughs> um, M, this is a good question. Do you think uh, Palomao would be good enough to start and replace Epps or Morig? What do you think about that? Because um, Palomao think... balled out last year. He He did. You know, I, I think that long term, probably Trey Taylor has a better a better shot. I think he's he's a better, well rounded athlete. Um, but Palomao is great. I th- I think he has a chance to be in there. He'll he'll continue to be a rotational player for sure. As a full time starter, I don't know. He's also had some issues with health as well, staying healthy. Not, yes. as, not as much as other guys, but there's always that that element to it as well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Dirty RC asks, is Tyree going to be a bust? We'll see. We will see. I, think so. I mean, he's been putting in the work, and that's all you can yeah, really he, ask. He is one of the players that's looked exceptional, according to all reports uh, in OTAs. Um, you know, he's... Got that. I've been in the uh, NFL training room for a year, kind of look to his body, and he's ready to get out there and I think, um, you know, really make make some noise. So I'd expect him to be a breakout player. Um, 
I think the way he came on at the end of last year, um, you know, I guess I just did this highlight tape of all of our plays from last year. Go check it out. But in the process of doing that, um, I got to see a lot of, of what he did at the end of the year. And it's actually pretty eye opening. He, he, he responded um, near the end of the season. I can, I think that's going to continue. So. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, and then another thing is, uh, I know what I can do is I can at least do this um, real quick. Just want to send a shout out over to earth. Elixir has been a supporter of ours for the past three months as a channel sponsor. Um, so big hats off to them. Hats off to Don, the owner and founder of it, who is also a Raiders fan for supporting the channel. Guys, if you want to get the best supplements money can buy, you got to go and check out Earth Elixir. My favorite that they have is Tangat Ali and Fidoji Agressus uh, combination. Helps you to raise your testosterone naturally. I love that stuff. I've been taking it for a year, and it really helps. I'm, like, seriously... Uh, addicted to it like it's not an addicting thing but every single morning i have to have my tongue at ali and my fidoji aggressive before i go and work out because i just yeah. feel so much better at 46 almost 47 now so definitely want to yeah. go and uh, check them out and then also guys if you want to get your max crosby just win baby dry fit t-shirts they are still in stock right now. Are on sale right now. There is the QR code for you. Go and check them out. And then one more thing to say. Support the stream, man. Become a member because you know what? Every last Saturday of the month, which will be tomorrow, even though I, yes, I know technically that's in the beginning of a new month, but we had some issues uh, on Saturday, obviously, with my father-in-law passing, so we did not do the live last Saturday. But we are going to do it uh, tomorrow. So for all the members, it's a members only. And ev all the members get a chance to come up here with me and conversate, ask any questions you want. Uh, it is a members only privilege. So we do that once a month. And then as soon as the season starts, we will be bumping that up to once a week. So you guys are going to want to check that out. Become a member today. Support the, the podcast. We just put all the money right back into the podcast and growing this out buying equipment mm -hmm. uh you know all the money that we spend traveling and stuff like that it's all going to be going towards those things and absolutely um, here's something here's something that's different with our podcast versus the bigger podcasts out there or the bigger youtube raiders content creators when they get a player they don't do it live so you mm -hmm. never get to ask your questions live with the player well this last week we had trey taylor on the show while he was at the training facility just got done mm -hmm. doing otas and sat down with me raider d for an entire hour live all yeah. kinds of questions came through the comments he was answering them answering them answering them, answering them. that's the difference and this is one of the reasons why you should support this channel because when we bring players on both current and former players we try to do that live as long as the player agrees to it and um, some of them don't feel comfortable doing the live and that's fine we'll respect that but the ones who do we bring them on live so that's a, a big perk that you get with the raider d podcast over some of the channels who have 170,000 subscribers i know we're just under 6,000 subscribers but we are the fastest growing podcast for raiders content creation as we've only been doing this for four months and we're already over 1.4 million views and 6,000 subscribers almost. So become a member today. Become a, a subscriber today. Yeah. Dirty RC says he's excited about Trey Tucker and that he's happy that there's a, a content creator that does lives. Yes, we do lives. We all do lives. We'll be doing. Are you, you going to be uh, on the live Sunday with me in Western, yeah. uh, Ritter D? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, come on by on Sunday and, and see us all so, together doing lives, do lives. We all the do. Time. I usually do more lives, but again, you know, we had some some uh, family tragedy this past week, so I took the most of the week off um, and just dealing with my family and stuff with that. But usually, I'm live anywhere from three days a week to seven days a week. It just depends if there's <coughs> stuff to talk about. I mean, I'm not gonna just come on live just in order to get views like we have to have something to talk about right so if we if there's something that happens um 
then we're gonna we're gonna come on live. We're gonna talk about it, or if we get a player mm-hmm. on, um, and we're gonna have the five week stretch before mandatory camp uh, after OTAs. So we're trying to get some more players on. We had Trey Ta- uh, uh, Trey Taylor on. Uh, we had Bruce Wilkerson on. Uh, who is a, a Raider great, an alumni of the Raiders, <laughs> Super Bowl champion, left tackle. And so um, we're going to be trying to get some more of these guys. Uh, we're trying to get uh, Dylan Lauby on right now. I'm in conversations with his agent um, and his publicist as well. So, um, or media relations person, I guess that's what they're called. I don't know. <laughs> So we're trying to schedule that, but because of OTAs, um, we're just waiting for that to get yeah. over. Then he'll have some free time. So we'll, we'll hopefully get Dylan on here. Uh, I've reached out to Devonte Adams' uh, agent, talking to them about trying to get DA on the channel. Um, that's a big fish. That's a hard one to get because everybody wants DA. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, you know, yeah. you never know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you're a great interviewer, so hopefully they'll come on and be subjected to some Roy Firestone style interviews um, for the folks who remember good old Roy back in the day. But yeah, um, yeah. impressive. Yeah, uh, your work there was uh, impressive with, with Roy Taylor. So just want to put that out there. Um, uh, yes, brother, it is Maghreb here in just a, in a minute for me. So. Me and Atrium have been talking about this. So I'm just going to put it out there. Um, have you heard the Trey Lance rumors? I've heard them. I don't. I don't. I don't have any credence to it. AOC, from all accounts, has been just killing it in OTAs. Now, granted, this isn't camp. Um, mm-hmm. I. I mean, you could bring in Trey. You could bring him in. He's better than and, Anthony Brown. And I think that if you're going to bring him in. Um, it, it spells that something is amiss, maybe with Gardner Minshew, maybe that, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Maybe the the coaching staff isn't feeling very confident in him. Obviously I I made my video about him missing the net by 10 yards on a 15 yard pass, (laughs) um, twice in a row, Uh, where AOC's throwing it into the little one by one square, which is to represent the receiver's hands, he's just throwing it right into the square, and then you got a twenty five foot square um, net, and Gardner Minshew couldn't even hit it, and it's only a fifteen yard pass, and this is the this has been the issue with him. Plus, when you look in the OTAs, and this was what I said, I love Gardner Minshew. This is not to hate on Gardner Minshew. Please, everybody right. understand this. Gardner, if you end up seeing this, I am so happy you're on the team because you are Please a fireball. You, yeah. you are, you know, if anything else happens, we know Gardner Minshew is going to go out there and he doesn't care that he's undersized. He doesn't care that he may not have the best arm talent. He doesn't care that he's not the premier quarterback uh, out there on the field. He he doesn't care about any of that. He just goes and plays ball. So I love the fact that we have Gardner Minshew. However, I also have to be objective. When you look at his arm motion, when you look at how the ball comes off of his hand, it is a duck ball five or six times out of ten. The ball does not have a good spiral on it, doesn't have good velocity on it. Now, there's other times where it does. But the problem is, when you go back and you look at his interceptions, it's almost every single interception is a duck ball. And that's, that's where you start to get concerned. Even a lot of the catches that he had, they were duck balls, and the receivers were just able to go and get it before you know the, the DBs. And when you look at his game tape coming out of the OTAs, and you, I mean, it's literally AOC will throw the ball, and it'll be a dart. And he'll back up. Gardner will come in. He'll throw the ball. And it's like a floater, ducky ball that doesn't have a lot of velocity on it. Um, It's off target. And this is the same thing. I made a video last year. It was before I really started doing anything with this channel. I was just randomly, like every couple of months, I would just throw a, a random video up. But I had seen OTAs 
of Jimmy Garoppolo, Hoyer, and AOC doing the same exact drills, and AOC is throwing darts. Hoyer is five yards off target, throwing duck balls, and then Jimmy Garoppolo, no velocity. And I said it in that video. I was like, AOC is throwing way better than the guy making $28 million a year and the, and the second string guy. I don't understand why AOC is second or third string. Mm -hmm. Same this is the situation. problem. Same situation yeah. now when you're looking at him throw it without being under pressure. Now, I do understand that some people play better under pressure. When I'm playing basketball, if you, if you want to go play horse, I'm going to be terrible. I'm mm -hmm. not going to even hit the rim half of the time. But if we're in a four on four game, a three on three game, or a two on two game, yeah, I'm getting I'm busy. Making my shots. Yeah, exactly. I need that. Like, it's something just triggers. I need that pressure in my face in order to focus. Yeah. The juice, so, the real juice. I think that's a part of what you're seeing with him, man. Like, you can just look at his demeanor, man. Like, he's not, he's not the guy who's like, you know, taking it seriously you know too deeply in practice but he is the dude who's always loose you know even in the most you know pressurized moments and that has you know some good and bad to it i think but uh yeah i don't think that he is uh he's not aiden o'connell right he's not a perfectionist who's gonna beat himself up if he misses that square he's really just like oh my arm i threw that and my arm feels looser so that's cool dude yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, bro, I'm gonna go take a. I'm going hiking after this. Anybody want to come? <laughs> like basically, like, man, I like, chill, man. I know I'm a little ass boy. I'm a little ass boy. But up in and the then it's like up in the mountains. The game day. Bro, you know, up in the mountains. I'm a. I'm, I'm big up there. Like the. How was? The how was? How was? Respect me. How was Stabler at Tuesday's practice? Do you think? I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> a train says um omg he was one play away from the playoffs so was aoc he's like stop bashing stop bashing my boy that's his boy dude i know yeah. not just him raiders but, rebel too yeah. raiders rebel loves him loves gardner Minshew. like and like i said hey, this is nothing bad about anybody gardner who's Minshew. yeah anybody who's a wsu fan anybody who's up in that that whole area you know, got to see him play in college, like their witness. And like, you know, he has an argument, man. He outplayed Trevor Lawrence so far in his career. Just saying. Yeah. And that's why, like, I don't know. I, I think Trevor Lawrence, I don't think that kid's ever really gotten a fair shot. I mean, he got hurt I, and mm -hmm. then benched. Like, mm -hmm. in, in, oh, okay, you're a, you're a bust. I mean, he hasn't played. Give that kid three full years. Give him what 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 uh, Justin Fields got. Give him three full years as a starter. Then say he's a bust. But with that being said, I also don't think that the Raiders are going to bring in Trevor Lance. I don't, I don't Trey Lance. Need, or Trey Lance. Sorry. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't see why the Raiders would do that unless the coaching staff is looking at okay. Gardner Minshew and saying, look at it like this. Uh, we look at it. need to bring in somebody else. We, it doesn't have to be seen this way. Look at it like this. Trey Lance at this place. How, what is the, I mean, obviously he's a slight upgrade or an upgrade from Anthony Brown jr. But aren't they really kind of in the same train, right? Like athletic quarterbacks that you can use for certain, you know, looks who aren't ready to start, who needs some development, you know, a couple years into the league, um, could be a long shot to be a developmental player. Maybe Trey Lance is closer to being something than Anthony Brown is, obviously. But I would look at it like that. Like, you know, hedge or bet, this is a young player who could develop into something down the road um, in lieu of the fact that we didn't draft a quarterback this year, that sort of thing. That's, uh, I think, how I would try to look at it. Right. Um, I mean, what would we have to give up for him? I mean, probably a sixth round pick or fifth round pick, something to that effect. Um, you know, I think it would be worth it. You know, um, just to bet on his potential. Um, you know, because he is an athletic player who has a lot of like 
the potential that way and could develop, you know, right coaching, right system, whatever. Um, and like you said, he hasn't had a real shot. You know, he got injured, barely played. You never know, right? Yeah, I think that – I mean, the, the kid deserves a shot. I mean, he was a first-round draft pick. Like, He's not going to get it in overall. Dallas. He was first overall, wasn't he? <sighs> I think it was top five, one. something like yeah. that. I don't think he was number one. I mean, the Niners gave up the bag to go up and get him. I think they got him at number three or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so he definitely deserves a shot. And, uh, but I, why, why would Dallas get rid of him though? You don't know. If, like if you're Dallas, you don't even know if you're going to be able to keep Dak. Well, if he was a threat, we would know about it already with the DAC kind of like negotiations. If Dallas is serious about him being in the future, they're not. Um, because if they were, they would be using him as leverage against Dak Prescott right now. Right. Yeah. They're not. So what that tells me is that he's not seen as the future there. Um, which is but probably that's, not that's concerning. You know, a great I mean, if sign. If he's not considered the future in Dallas, he wasn't considered the future in the 49ers. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But is Dallas really who you want to listen to as far as making personnel decisions? No. It's like, I mean, time, he, Jerry I mean, Jones is like two seconds away from Al Davis in his final couple of years at this place. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, Taino Raider 16 says uh, or asks, what are you guys' post-June 1st predictions uh, for free agency player extensions or trades? Mm -hmm. My opinion is that the Raiders will spend the, the majority of that, and you're going to see a, a bunch of rapid-fire uh, contract extensions uh, for mm -hmm. players that we already have. This has always kind of been Tom Telesco's method is homegrown. If you've mm -hmm. got good players, extend them. And Keep so them. that's, you know, we got several players who need to be extended. My opinion mm -hmm. is you extend them now. Yeah. Right? I know everybody's saying, well, let's wait and see what Koontz does this year. Well, no. if he does, and he ends up with 14 sacks, oh, we man. can't afford him at that point. You, know, you, price you can afford out. him now. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to sign Spillane and Hobbs and all those guys now, you'll get them for you know for a song and yeah, go ahead and get it done. But like, if we're talking about waiting till free agency to see what happens, then some of those players could price themselves out. So yeah, I I, I think Koontz and Hobbs like just get that done immediately. And here's and the then, thing: if we have a deep playoff run team, and mm -hmm. then they become free agents, well now. Not only are they good players because they had a good season, but they mm -hmm. also are coming from a team that just went deep right. in the playoffs, maybe even a Super Bowl, and then they become yeah. extraordinarily expensive at that point. Yeah, so yeah. Definitely experienced. They're going to get bidded on because people are like, oh, leadership and experience. We're going to add that yeah. to our team. And yeah, yeah. so uh, Koontz, Hobbs, probably Spillane if you can get them for you know, a, good, a good extension now, get that done. Um, and then, you know, maybe, maybe you see about Epps, um, but I think Merrick is probably a priority also. Um, just, you know. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see on Merrick, um, and Epps. We have a ton of safeties on the team right now. We yeah, have, yeah, a few guys, a bunch of guys, and that may be, that may spell, trouble for those two guys um, because I think Trey's going to ball out in the preseason um, mm. and then you've got other guys that are, are going to be if they if other guys can be at least as good as those two mm -hmm. then they're on rookie scale contracts you let those two guys go you save money and you still get the same production mm -hmm. so that's, that's we'll see that's my concern with them, but I think the, the no brainer guys is you resign Hobbs immediately. You resign Koontz immediately Spillane. Sure. Um, and I think that with Spillane, if you come with him with a four year, $28 million deal, he'll sign that. 
uh, because he came over on a two year seven million. I think it was two, mm-hmm. two year seven or two year twelve. One, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he came over cheap anyway. So for him, that's a bag. He's going to end up with like after taxes and agency fees, he's going to end up with like twenty million dollars in the bank. Um, and he's a smart dude. He's gonna he's gonna use that money well. He's not gonna overspend. Mm-hmm. So for him, that's like you're set for life. You're you're a multimillionaire. You're good. Um, and now you get to play for four years with the team that you love. Um, mm-hmm. I think with you know Snaps and Merrick, you could probably wait until after training camp and make that decision with them. But mm-hmm. you definitely you definitely want to lock up your go to guys, your important guys um, right now. Mm-hmm. Just just kill yeah. any thought, especially with Koontz. Just kill any thought of him saying, "Nah, I'm going to wait till free agency." Because yeah, I'm yeah. just I am just balling out in in uh, camp right now. I am just destroying yeah. everything right now. So yeah. I think I'm going to be worth more. So I'm going to go ahead and wait. So that's why you want to sign him. Yeah. Right now. Before camp, yeah. I would also say uh, Divine Diablo, after going back and watching um, some tape from last year, get that guy signed now. Um, when he's healthy, he, he's, he kind of was everywhere last year. He made a lot of plays. He was running around making a lot of plays. And I think, you know, another year of him doing that and he's going to be, you know, $10 million um, because he's an athletic linebacker who can cover a little bit and that kind of stuff. Uh, you sign him now, you can get him for five or six and that makes it make sense. So yeah, um, get Diablo done. Get, I think Diablo probably uh, might be even more pressing than Spillane just because I think Diablo could end up pricing himself even higher than, than Spillane because he of the different kind of different kind of off ball linebacker position he plays, right? He's an outside linebacker versus a Mike. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um and then I agree with it, uh what Tano says as well. You know, maybe you just let Epps contract work its way out. Mm-hmm. A lot of young guys on the team. Alamal, Trey, Chris Smith, yeah. Yeah. And you want to, I mean, you want to play it smart. What we don't want to end up in, we don't want to end up in salary cap hell, which the Chargers were in when uh, Tom Telesco left. I think he's learned his lesson from that, but we'll see long term. Um, so you you kind of got to make those evaluations of, you know, can I get the same level of play for a guy I'm paying the base salary to mm-hmm. versus a guy I got to pay $10 million a year to? If I can what the position? Same level of pay at, at safety, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, safety, you just, I just don't see it. I don't see, like I said, unless it's Ed Reed. I mean, look, look what did was the Dermot James contract a good contract? No, I mean, I'm not saying that they that they would get ten million. I'm just using that as like an example, right? Um, mm. you, you just okay. take any position and say, okay, I can I can get away with, you know. Nine hundred thousand dollars a year, versus paying millions of dollars a year, right? Oh yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And so, and if I'm getting the same level of production, then it's a no-brainer that you do that. Yeah. There are certain positions on the team, however, that, I mean, it's hard to get that same level of production. You're not going to replace Max Crosby for nine hundred grand a year. Mm-mm. There's not. No. Uh, no. You could you could take Max Crosby and trade him tomorrow and put Tyree out there, and. Tyree is not going to get half of the production that Max Crosby gets. Um, so you just can't, you can't do that. Despite the fact that, you know, he's a seventh overall pick. He's just not there right now. And I said this before, like if you took the motor from Max Crosby and the hand fighting skills that he has and the footwork that he has, and you gave that to Tyree Wilson, Tyree Wilson would get 25 sacks a, a year. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. He, he, Tyree Wilson is physically superior to Max Crosby as far as strength goes and athleticism. But Max Crosby, what he lacks in the strength and athleticism, not saying that he's not strong, he is a beast, but I'm just saying that Tyree is, is stronger. Um, Max makes up for in just pure hustle, motor, nonstop, 98% of the snaps. Always technique. on the field, technique, hand fighting skills, um, and just understanding what offenses are doing. Mm-hmm. 
that's what makes Max Crosby so great. And that's why I say all the mm-hmm. time, like, you can be the most athletic guy out there on the field if you don't if you don't study film and you're not mm-hmm. in the facility training all the time. Yeah. There's going to be a Max Crosby that's going to sit you on the bench. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing with Tyree Wilson is that uh, he, his technique and stuff is going to be more important for him than even, uh, you know, say uh, a different style rusher. He's not a speed rusher, so he can't just lean on outrunning a tackle, right, um, in order to, to make things happen. Um, he's a power rusher, and you saw him trying to just kind of lean on a bull rush, which is not going to work in the NFL. So a lot of times, like a speed rusher might have a better chance of having early success just because they will lean on that one trait, you know, outrun the, the tackle to the corner and get some sacks that way. He's not going to do that. So, you know, he's going to have to learn to hand fight in order to make sure that that power that he has actually becomes a trait that's useful. Um, and so it sounds like he's starting to do that. Um, there's that big learning curve because even if you know how to use your hands like Max did coming out of college, um, he found out he didn't really know how to use his hands when he got to the pros. So, um, yeah, I think that's what what you'll see with him. It's just like he's stuck in this situation where, you know, the technique was going to be super important for him because he's not a, a speed rusher. So I think that's part of, part of what you're seeing there. So Omar makes a good point. He says spending money on defense makes no sense right now. I mean, as far as, like, getting new free agents, I don't think we need any. So I agree with that. Extending our guys that we do have, we do need to do. Um, We need some game changers on offense, someone that's going to make the defense focus on them. Well, I think we kind of addressed that in the draft with Brock Bowers. Um, We have Devontae. Got the best wide receiver. And you you got a guy, AOC, um, coming out of his, you know, into his second year now, full off season as the go-to starter, all first team reps, uh, has pretty much already mastered Luke Getze's, uh playbook, has it has it mostly memorized, um, and this is the kind of guy that you get with AOC. Like I, I said yeah. before, if you talk to anybody that's been in the NFL, they will always tell you that when it comes to the quarterback. You have two kind of quarterbacks, right? You have the gunslinger, crazy guy who's going to throw a bunch of touchdowns, 5,000 yards, but he's also going to throw a ton of interceptions. But he's also like cool, calm, collected, doesn't care, and, and it is what it is. And then you've got those cerebral guys, and that's what AOC is. He's got mm-hmm. a good arm. He's got good technique. Yeah. I, I wish he would stop slapping the ball, though. That's my only mm. critique of him. I know Tom Brady was able to get away with that, but Trey Taylor, Trey Taylor said in in his interview that uh, one of the things he looks for is quarterbacks who slap the ball. It's a telltale sign they're giving away what they're about to do. I so I I really wish he would stop slapping the ball. Uh, Don't don't telegraph to the defense that you're getting ready to throw the ball. But uh, he's very cerebral. He was able to master McDaniel's playbook as a third string guy. So he's not getting first string uh, offensive snaps. He's watching Jimmy Garoppolo and Brian Hoyer a lot. And uh, he had that playbook memorized where Jimmy Garoppolo, who was supposed to be familiar with that offense, could not figure out the offense because he didn't want to memorize it. He didn't, it was too complicated for him. Mm -hmm. And so. I, I got high expectations for Aiden O'Connell this year. I think he's going to be fine, and uh, he's going to have a he's going to have a heck of a year. Um, but with that yeah. being said, uh, I got to run, guys. It's getting a little bit late for me out here, so yep. I think everybody that has been in the comment section, and uh, obviously my guy Hot Beavers from Raider Nation Hot Spot, please go subscribe to his channel. Go check out all of his videos. He has fantastic yes. breakdowns. Um, yeah, you know, and, and here's the thing that it's like we're we are like the Batman and Robin. I don't know who's the Batman. I don't know who is the Robin in this relationship. I'm like the I'm like the, the, the wild guy. I come completely unprepared off the cuff. No script, no notes. I just go with wherever the flow is. And then you look at Hot Beavers 
He's very meticulous. He takes notes. He has extraordinary uh, ability to tout stats to you uh, in his videos. Where mine, it's going to be a lot of opinionated stuff. But I, I kind of know what I'm talking about sometimes. But he's he going to give you all of that good stat breakdown. So if you want that good stat breakdown, you got to go watch his videos. And if you just yeah. want to be entertained and, and laugh a little bit, yeah. come and watch yeah. my videos. That's right. That's right. Yeah, if you want to you want to break down at Getsy's offense and kind of particulars of how things work, we've got something on that. If you want a great interview where you get to know a player, you've got Raider D dropping Trey, Trey Taylor, guys. Trey Taylor. Trey Taylor yeah. was on the on the show last week, guys. Go and check it out. Um, I got the whole the whole live video uh, with Trey, and then there's a couple of of segments that I cut out of there. So if you just want to watch, mm-hmm. you know, little four or five minute segments, or you want to watch the whole hour long thing yeah. with him, go and check it out. Uh, a Train, yeah. thank you so much for the super chat, brother. I appreciate you, uh, big time supporter. By the way, uh. Because I've been off the air, I have not uh, I have not been able to, to say this just yet. But each month we do have a for the members we have the member supporter of the month badge, and my dude Anthony, Mister A Train himself, you are May's winner of supporter of the month, uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna be sending you an email here pretty soon. Uh, go ahead and shoot me your address. Because you got a poster coming your way, my brother. Nice, nice. One of the, uh, gonna the need that for the posters, guys. Put if that you up. guys want to get your posters, I'll throw this up one more time. Uh, That's if you right. Want your posters, you want to get your T-shirts? Go and check them out right now. They are on sale. Um, nice. For sure. So A Train, yeah. salute to you, brother. Thank you so much for being such a big supporter of the channel. Just like my dude right. Ryan, Ryan, minus forty two hundred. Uh, Absolutely. All of you guys that have been with us, uh, Tano, Raider, fantastic, man. All of you dudes support you. Don't put it on Thanks. YouTube, brother. <laughs> I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take this off. I, oh, I can't take it off. Bro, delete that. Don't put your stuff on the internet. Just no, no. A-Train, you got my email, man. Just email it to A-Train. me. A-Train. A-Train. Dude, don't, <laughs> don't give the train station address. Get that out of there. Bro, delete that. Oh, comment. man. You got the zip code and everything. Delete oh that, God. man. Yeah, delete it. Delete it, bro. Please. Please, please. I don't want some crazy A-train. person showing up to your house. All right, guys. A-train. I'm going to sign off for the night. Uh, thank the you, house. my brother Hot Beavers, for uh, showing up. Thank and, you. Uh, all the yes, love awesome. Support, everybody. Uh, Thanks you know, guys, chat. how we uh, end this every single time. If you're new to the channel, let me give you a little foresight on what it's going to be. Uh, there is a chant that the Raiders do. It's very simple. Say it with me. Raiders! Raiders! Just win.